Hey guys, AB here from BNH, and I'm also with Andrew from BNH, and today we're going to talk about modular synthesizers. What is a modular synthesizer? Why is it different than just a keyboard? Hmm. So a modular synthesizer, if we look back into the history, this was the very first type of synthesizer that right. was invented. Uh, they were really big. Uh, they were really expensive. Usually only universities could afford them. Sure. Or famous rock stars. <laughs> uh, if you look at a modular synthesizer, you'll see that it it, uh, it has individual modules. That's right. where it, it gets this the name modular. So each module has a dedicated function. Right. So you'll have uh, a VCO, which is a voltage-controlled oscillator. That, that just generates waveforms. Okay. So your sawtooth, your square waves, sine your, waves, your sine waves, noise. Like, right. Like, that, that one particular modular, it's just generating sounds. Gotcha. And in order for you to hear that, you have to route, you could route it directly into your speaker, your PA system, but there's a number of other components you can use to okay. route it through to shape the sound. Right. Um, you may run it through a filter. Okay. So like a voltage controlled filter. A uh, VCF, so that's what that stands for. Yes, gotcha, VCF gotcha. stands for voltage controlled filter, and that will remove the harmonic content. Right. So if you think about uh, certain types of waveforms like sawtooth or square wave, right. those are really, uh, they have really high harmonic content. Right. Whereas if you listen to a uh, triangle wave or a sine wave, like a sine wave, there is no harmonics. It's, it's just one single tone. It's, it's just one tone. It's a, it's, it's okay. a fundamental. Uh, there's nothing in nature that can really produce a pure sine wave. Right. But man-made synthesizers, we can. It's <laughs> right. pretty fascinating. It's pretty cool. And, um, and then moving from your filter, you would route it through, say, a voltage-controlled amplifier. Okay, the VCA. So that create that's actually like a gain, or is that just that's just it, it, it is. It's like having a knob where you can it, it will have a volume knob on it, right? But it will have CV input, control voltage input, okay. And then you can route things to it to shape it. Okay. So if you think about like the VCO, VCF, and VCA, uh, two other modules or functions that you would find on, on a traditional synthesizer would be an LFO, right. which stands for low frequency oscillator. Right. The LFO, uh, it's just like a regular oscillator, it's just the frequencies are so low you couldn't hear it. Right. It's below 20 hertz, you know, 5 hertz or 0.1 hertz or whatever. So it's not really, you're not using that to hear it, you're using it to shape the sound essentially. Yeah, it generates the same kind of shape uh, in terms of like a cycle, so like a sine wave would be going up and right, down, right. right? So you would route that. If I route, say, an LFO to a VCO, an oscillator, uh, you can create an effect like vibrato. Got you. So a vibrato is the modulation of pitch. Sure. Uh, if you route the LFO to a filter, uh, creates like a wah wah pedal, gotcha. so like a guitarist who's you know making the waka waka sounds. <laughs> waka like, waka. And then if you route uh, an LFO to a VCA, a uh, voltage controlled amplifier, you're getting the classic tremolo gotcha. uh, effect, where you're amp amp you're, you're mo uh, modulating the amplitude of right. the signal. Right. And then the other uh, filter or the other uh, circuit or or function generator that you would find on a traditional synthesizer is the envelope generator. Right. So the envelope is how you can shape. A particular circuit over time. Sure. So if you route it, traditionally you'll have an envelope that always goes to your amp amplifier. Right. So that's how you can create things that fade in and fade out or make it more snappy or, you know, you're just kind of shaping it. So gotcha. longer attacks are really good for pads and strings, whereas uh, short attacks are really good for percussion or bass lines. Right, keep that transient nice and yep. tight. Cool, cool. And of course, now that years have passed and technology is advanced, we've got modular synthesis in very small formats. So we really have a nice compact setup, uh, but it's quite powerful, which you'll hear in a little bit. I also want to mention that one of the reasons we wanted to use the Mini Brute uh, gear is that we felt like this was a good way for people who are not familiar with modular synthesizers or who want to get into the game of modular synths uh, to get into it pretty quickly because you'll notice that in addition to buttons and keys, depending on which one you're looking at, each has a patch bay on the mm -hmm. right side. Uh, which allows you to both patch externally to some of the gear that you see here, or any gear that you would like, but also you can patch internally using these cables to sort of alter the sound within the unit itself, which is cool. So you, you're not just limited to knobs and faders, you're also able to create sound and manipulate sound using this patch bay internally. I think it's kind of cool. 
definitely opens up a lot of possibilities. And if you're a new user that's wanting to get into uh, modular synthesis, this is a great way to get into it because it's not as daunting. You can literally take it out of the box, right. plug it in, and if you're you know sequence using the sequencer or play the keys, mm -hmm. and everything is going to work exactly as, as as you would think. Sure. You know, you can shape sounds. Now, obviously, we have the Rack Brute from Arturia, which is great because it's housing all this gear. The Moog Mother 32 and the Roland 572 at the top there, the, the black pieces, we got those from, from B&H directly. However, the pieces on the bottom are really interesting because those are pieces that are from your own personal collection. So I wanted to have some sort of drum or percussion. Um, so I brought in this module, uh, these two together. These are uh, essentially, it's the, it's a, it's an analog drum module, right. so each, it has, I think, eight different drum sounds, kick, snare, hi-hat, sure. toms, wood block, uh, open and closed hi-hats. Uh, you have volume control running down. Right. Uh, to the right of that is the expansion module. So right. the expansion module connects to the, the regular drum module and it gives you some additional uh, controls over the sound, so you have more decay. You can change the pitch on a lot of the drums. Right. So it just it it really does help uh, flush out. So you can it gives you more options in terms of sound. I also want to point out that this also uh, has individual outputs. So you nice. have the trigger inputs to trigger each sound individually, and then you have outputs which you can route to a mixer, which is what we were doing. Sure. We routed the kick and the snare separately out. Uh, into our mixer so we could EQ it right. and control right. the levels a little bit better. Definitely. So this is a really unique uh, module made by Mutable Instruments. It's called a topographic drum sequencer. Right. So that gives you like the maps. Right. And Like an x-axis, y-axis type yep. thing? x-axis, y-axis, and depending on, on where you are within the x and y-axis, it generates uh, different types of drum rhythms, drum patterns. That's very cool. uh, some of it gets more complex, some of it gets less complex, uh, and, and it has control voltage inputs for both the X and Y axis, and also there's a chaos okay. knob where you can route it in. Uh, and it clocks perfectly to, to whatever clock input you use, nice. or it can run on its own, but it's a great way of, of generating drum patterns sure. on the fly uh, that are really interesting, I think. That's very cool. Um, and of course, lastly, we have the Maths. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you explain that a little bit? This is Maths by Make Noise. Uh, this is a function generator, essentially. Okay. It's like an analog computer. It has two separate sides that are independent of each other. You can cross-modulate and have them affect each other. Right. Um, the, the two circuits on either side, this allows you to take a, a clock input, and then it generates almost like an LFO, but you can sh reshape the rise and fall times in interesting ways. Wow, and, okay. and, and then in the center, uh, these four knobs act as attenuators. Right. It works really well. I mean, it's it's a great piece uh, for, for creating all kinds of really interesting uh, sounds that sort of change and, and evolve over time. Yeah, it's a Absolutely. really neat piece. That's really cool. And of course, up top, we've got the Moog Mother 32 and the Roland 572. Just briefly uh, let people know how we were using these pieces. I uh, really wasn't utilizing them to the best of their ability. Uh, right. Honestly, I'm using the LFO outputs sure. on these. But really, I wanted to, I thought it was really important to demonstrate that your Mother 32 can be taken out of its chassis and fitted into a rack case so it can be part of a much larger system. Sure, sure. And it, and it integrates really well. Well, I'm excited to hear what this gear sounds like. So, Andrew, why don't you take it away and give us a little taste of what modular synthesis is all about? Cool, let's do it. Yeah.
Andrew, thank you so much for doing that. Amazing stuff. Guys, thank you for watching. We hope you found this video really useful. I'm AB from B&H. See you next time.